mention it. In this video, we're going to be working with an Arduino. Uh, specifically, we're going to be working on a project called DataCube. Uh, so if you're familiar with Datasphere, which is a project we did about two months back, that was a Unity visualization. So it would emit particles based on input from other programs and then draw them to the screen. We're going to do that, but we're going to do it in real life with IoT and specifically, we're going to be using an Arduino, this guy, and 240 lights. Because why not? Um, so I've got a, but a foot by a foot plexiglass cube. Uh, it should be semi-transparent, so the light should shine through it. I'm still working on constructing that in the background there. Uh, but we're going to work on actually getting these lights to light up from this Arduino. I have been playing with this for about four or five months. Uh, data or data sphere was actually something I created because I couldn't get this to work. Uh, the reason I couldn't get this to work is because I had plugged my data pin, which there, so if you can't see, there are a focus. There's a ton of pins on here. Uh, so each of those pins is a data line. It goes to something. There's some ground, there's some other things. I had connected the six port, which is where all of the data is coming out of. Uh, I, I hadn't connected that actually. I'd connected it to the one right next to it because I read it wrong. Uh, and I did that a good, a good about eight times in a row because that's just what I do. <laughs> and then obviously it never works. So I bought these after my first strip didn't work and my second strip didn't work. So I also have another 300 LEDs that work perfectly fine. They're actually the high, higher density ones. I bought these because I was tired of getting the high density LEDs. You can get them in 144, uh, 60 per meter per foot, per foot, per meter, per foot. Uh, so you can get them at per meter. Uh, so you can get them at 60 per meter or 144 per meter. I have 244 strips and I also have this one, which is four meters and is 60 per meter. Uh, so that should be more than enough to fill our cube. This was a very long ramble, but I'm going to keep going with it. So what we need to do here is use this Arduino software. Uh, you saw the lights were already on this thing. Uh, that's because it's plugged into my computer. It's already powered and it, it's an Arduino micro. Yeah, an Arduino micro. And so it's getting power. It actually gets powered over micro USB. So we don't actually need a power source for this. Uh, the LEDs on the other hand do need a power source. That's not plugged in yet. Uh, what we do need to do is go in here and grab something else. So the Arduino software actually comes with a number of things you can do. Uh, one of the things is this NeoPixel library. And if I remember correctly, which I might not, there's a NeoPixel test. There we go. So this actually comes with your Arduino software. And so what it does is it runs a, a blinking strip down your LED cube or down your LED strip. Uh, so these are called NeoPixel lights. They're, it's an LED strip that accepts a ground, a power, and a data signal. And then based on the data si signal, it actually can do RGB colors on each of the lights individually. Uh, I don't think that we can light all of these at once, but what we can do is we can turn them on and off. So what we need to do is configure this. It's four meters long. Uh, so there are four meters. I feel like this is four feet. That may also be wrong. I don't actually know. Um, and so what we need to do is this already comes with everything. This is pretty much just a getting started thing. Uh, so you need to just define the total number of LEDs. Uh, we're four times 60. And then the pin on your Arduino that you're connecting to by default it's six which is good because that's the one I have it to, not seven like I used to. Uh, and then what it does is it does this chase down the strip, uh, which is just going to move the LEDs down the strip over time. So once you have your so once you have it totally done, uh, this is just totally just a test to see if this works. Uh, and then we might do some a little bit more playing with this, but I just kind of want to introduce this project before I show you the entire cube and it's all working. 
because uh, there's a Raspberry Pi and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to be plugging into this, and it's going to get way more complicated than this. So I just want to start basic, and then we'll go from there. So I'm uploading the software. What it does is it actually flashes onto the uh, onto the Arduino. So when the Arduino starts, it only has this program on it. There's nothing. There's no operating. Well, actually, there is an operating system, but all it does is start up that program. Doesn't do anything else. There's not Windows or Linux or anything crazy on there. It's pretty basic, and that's just what we need. We just want this for testing our stuff. Uh, so my mic is in the way, so I can't actually read that. <laughs> so what it's doing is it's uploading the bytes over to our thingamajiggy. And then once it's done, which it should be finishing shortly, it will actually restart this and it will just go. Uh, so it just it just runs whatever program you give it and it doesn't really care about anything else. This is all the logic it has in it. There's nothing fancy going on. And that's sort of what you're stuck with with these kind of things, uh, which it kind of sucks because if it doesn't work, so if this software doesn't work or if there's a hardware bug or something, we're stuck. Uh, there's nothing. There's not much we can do to test this. We can pull out some like testers to pull uh, test the voltage and uh, current and all of that. But other than that, you're kind of here. Uh, it is struggling rather mightily. It shouldn't take this long, and I'm concerned I may have pointed it to the wrong place. Yeah, pretty sure I was supposed to point it at the Arduino and not at whatever else this is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So that broke. So there's the COM ports, which are your... Don't know what COM stands for, uh, but effectively they're, they're your serial communications. So this is going to be uh, your USB drives, it's going to be your mouse, it's going to be your keyboard, it's going to be everything plugged into your computer. Uh, not everything may show up, uh, because I have a lot more USBs plugged into my computer than this, uh, but effectively that's what you get. So there's all of our boards we can support. Don't really care about that, I don't think. I, I had totally redone my computer, so actually a lot of this stuff is totally new, uh, and I haven't tried it. We're going to push it to the right thing this time, uh, and hopefully that works this time. Uh -huh. I, I, I didn't really know how this was going to go, just making it up as I go. Uh, that's why we're starting the basics, to make sure this actually works. Uh, so once this is done, which we may I may cut this out, but once this is done, uh, I'll plug in the power and see if the LEDs go and then maybe make like a necklace or something and then that'll be it or we'll do we'll do something else i haven't really thought that far ahead it'll probably be spur of the moment creativity or just stupidity <laughs> um, so yeah i'll see you guys once this is finished or broken that's also an option uh so i had to do a few other things uh specifically all those boards i was talking about i had to switch it so they match uh so the board here Oops, right here, the Arduino Genuino Micro. I think that's just supposed to mean the micro. Uh, and then obviously our COM port is saying the same thing. Uh, so we have no serial number, that's cool. Uh, but I think it's good. I don't really know what I'm doing here, honestly. This is my first project with Arduinos. And obviously it's going great because I've spent four or five months on it and I don't even have anything. So, you know, it's it's gone well. So we've got power and we've got uh, this contraption here. I've got a bunch of wires. It's probably, it's totally safe, I swear. Uh, so, we can plug it in and we get, oh, you, you totally can't tell what that's doing. There we go. So we've got LEDs, blue right now, uh, but then they, they just sort of trace red now, uh, but they, they'll go through and do whatever. So yeah, we now have a working LED strip thing. 
So we can now hook this up and actually set this however we want on our Arduino. And it's all working, which is good. I actually made something that works. That's nice. Um, so yeah, that that's sort of well, that's sort of what I wanted to build. Uh, let's see if we can do something else interesting. I don't know exactly what I want to make. I'm sure we'll come up with something. Uh, give me, give me a second. Let me come up with something, and then we'll we'll come back, and I will have a great idea, or not. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is we are going to make just a flat strip. Uh, so right now it kind of chases around. I, I don't. I, I that's cool and all, but let's just color all the pixels one color. See how that works. I I don't know what I'm doing. So we'll see. Uh, there we go. Grab that. Get into our setup and drop this for loop here. Uh, so what? there's two things an Arduino does. It has a setup, which is going to set up everything that it needs to do what it's doing. And then there's the, uh, there's the loop, which is going to run every single time. Uh, so actually, we can probably plug in here our little value. Uh, so, what this is doing is it's sort of iterating over every every element in our strip, uh, so and it iterates over them, and then sets the pixel color. That's cool. Internal temp too high, but I just I got all dressed up. Well, that's lame. Sorry about that. My camera got overheated. I think I have a different excuse for why my camera keeps failing every single time, but really it it overheated. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set every color, every pixel in this strip to the same color. I don't know exactly what color. Uh, we might just do like a fade. That that could be interesting, but why not? We've got time. Well, I've got time. I don't know if you guys do, but we already did the interesting things, so now we're just screwing around. <laughs> So what we're going to do is, there's two things that this is doing. It uh, is setting a pixel, and then it's actually erasing one. And it looks like, judging from this, there's no error thrown if you go off your uh, your index, because this was going to plus four. We don't care about that, because we're just, we're literally just doing whatever we're doing. Uh, so since we're, since we're setting every color, we don't need to erase any of them, because it doesn't make sense. They're all they're all getting set. Uh, then I'm gonna move the strip dot show. I'm pretty sure I haven't actually read any documentation because why would I read documentation? Uh, so I'm pretty sure what this is going to do is it's going to actually set the color, uh, or it's going to actually display these. So there's going to be some sort of thing that's stored in here, and then we need to actually send that information. Uh, so this is effectively just storing it in a buffer, and then this actually flushes that buffer and puts it on the strip. I think. <laughs> Lots of guesswork here. Probably because I did not do my job. But we're going to go with this anyway. I'm going to make it all red. So 255020, which it should be red. Uh, so just replace our color with that. And we should, assuming everything is working as intended. I can get rid of that. Don't need that. But what this should do is it should go through and set every single pixel to bright red. Uh, I'm actually, just so we don't get any issues with this uh, overheating, or with this running out of power, because uh, there's a finite amount of power here. Uh, it's only getting powered by this one uh, thing. And so powering all of these LEDs might be too much for it. So I'm actually going to have this and just make it half as bright. Uh, if this works, we can crank it all the way up, but I don't want that to be the reason it fails. Uh, so we should upload it. You can see the entire thing did that. And then red. Cool. So we have an entirely red LED strip. This is starting to look really fun. I might need to get into some of this IoT clothing thing because this is, this is cool. 
Uh, so now if we up the brightness all the way, this should get quite bright. Oh, I think we're out of power. Uh, so I'm gonna stop this before something horrible happens. We'll just do that. There we go. So constant red. Yeah, I think that's pretty neat. So we obviously we're obviously having issues powering all of this, uh, but that that was kind of expected. I sort of thought that was going to happen. So what we need to do now is actually connect all of this. Uh, so effectively, how this is going to work is there's going to be some sort of signal, just like we have with data sphere. There's going to be a signal coming in that's going to say here's the color, and then it's going to start all the way at the bottom and go up. Uh, so we're going to run a Raspberry Pi that is going to actually accept those signals. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi is going to be running connected directly to this. It's actually going to be what's powering this. Uh, and then that is actually going to be accepting input from wherever I decide to send it from. Uh, maybe from our cloud computer that's also in our to-do folder. Uh, so once all of that's going, What's going to happen is the signals are going to come in from, say, we get a Twitter message or somebody subscribes or watches a YouTube video. I don't know how to get real-time watch statistics. I really want to find that. Uh, so as that starts coming in, we can take it and represent it as a little dot going down this stream. Uh, so as social interaction sort of increases, this strip is going to get more and more active. Uh, and I think we're proving right now that it can actually handle this pretty well. Uh, so if I, just as an example, increment i plus equal to 2. So effectively what we're going to do is do every other pixel at full power. I don't think that's how power works. I might, I might just overpower it again. Uh, but we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, no, this is working. Uh, so this is full power doesn't actually look that much different <laughs> but anyway uh, effectively these dots are going to go down the strip and we should be able to we're powering all of these right now so i don't think we're going to run into any issue with not having enough power to power all of them uh, so theoretically we get that working then we just need to start plugging in data signals uh, facebook twitter and youtube are sort of my to do and then maybe a few others i i haven't figured out what those might be but they can kind of come and go because it's going to be all service driven. So adding new ones is just really easy. Uh, so it's really just an API call uh, and that, that, that shouldn't take too much time. So I think it's going to be really cool. I'm hoping to kind of set it up back that way on my uh, bookshelf back there. And so you guys can actually see it as, as I'm recording videos and as I do like live streams and things, I think that'd be really sweet. Uh, so if you've got ideas for what we can do with all of this stuff, uh, Obviously, I'm no clothing designer, uh, so if you guys have ideas with other other projects, I have two more meter-long LED strips. I don't have any Arduinos, but we can get those pretty pretty easily. Uh, so if there's other IoT things you want to see, I've got a bunch of Raspberry Pis, I've got some Arduinos, or I don't have Arduinos, but I can get Arduinos. Uh, then let me know, because I think I think these this is a really fun project. Well, not yet, but it's going to be. Uh, so yeah. Uh, as always, if there's anything you guys want to see me change or improve, or, or there's other ideas for different projects, let me know in the comments. Uh, those are That's kind of what drives the channel. So uh, yeah, until next time, see you internet.